This episode sponsored by Lake Monster Details, producing the Don's Light and Magic Legacy line of parts, offering upgrade parts and decals for accuracy, special effects, and lighting. Visit www.lakemonsterdetails.com and make it glow. Also sponsored by G-Cows, producing aftermarket replacement decals and custom quality graphics for your favorite spaceships. Visit www.gcals.company.site and add some personalization to your sci-fi models today. Also sponsored by Mask Design, boldly going where no masking kit has gone before. Take your model to the next level of detail and accuracy with a masking kit from Mask Design. Visit Mask Design on Facebook or click the ordering link in the notes below the video. What's up, fellow modelers? Will here. Welcome to the Engines Chair. So, episode number two of the 11000 NCC 2000 Excelsior build, and uh, I'm getting getting progress on this because this this model requires a lot of prep work. Um, I've got some other parts coming that I'm waiting on, so I can't do but so much. And pretty much, I think by the end of this video, will probably be to where I can, as far as I can go until those aftermarket parts get here. I'm waiting on uh, aftermarket parts for this from Cass over Lake Monster Details. Um, I believe he is going to get those out to me. Tomorrow's the July 4th holiday. So I'm hoping he's uh, going to get to, he said tomorrow, but I think he means Friday because there's no postal service tomorrow because of the 4th of July holiday. So if he gets those in the mail Friday, I should hopefully have them the early part of next week. And uh, I can continue this build. But also, I've got the 1537 Reliant that I'm waiting to start on. Not as much prep work on that as there is on this, which is why I'm kind of focusing on getting this up to speed because uh, I've got to drill all the windows out, and then there's some work to do there. And uh, there's some stuff i got to... Obviously, I've got to add windows to the 1537 Reliant, but I've got another option for that that I'm going to be showing you. Uh, so, waiting on some stuff for that. Uh, Gus is also sending decals, Aztec decals, for this one... 1000 uh, Excelsior build and uh, Gary should have his paint mask out um, I saw he just put up the uh, video for the third video part three for the video uh, applying his uh, Aztec masks for the 1537 line so he should be sending me a set of those here shortly and hopefully have those next week as well and uh, that way we can start getting into some more builds I, I can't really do anything else to the uh, Enterprise A Ian Lawrence tribute build until I get parts from Cass as well. He's sending me some additional parts uh, for some other things I'm going to do to this. So uh, until those get here, I can't really do anything else to that because um, the saucer is ready for Aztecing, but I've got some touch-up work I've got to do on some stuff before I can do that. Plus I'm waiting on a replacement set of masks from Gary as well. So big breath. As soon as I get all that stuff, I can start working on more of these other builds that I've got lined up. Uh, but for now, we're going to focus on the NCC 2000 Excelsior 1-1000 scale. So give me a minute. I'll put you on the bench. We'll get to work. All right. So we're back at it. And uh, the first thing I want to get into is um, on this upper part. I thought when I first looked at the photos, I thought that the uh, windows stopped here. And I thought it wasn't until they did the Enterprise B that the windows went all the way back. But um, in <laughs> rewatching are actually splicing together the, uh, the opening sequence uh, for this build where the uh, Excelsior makes that flyby coming towards the camera. I noticed that the windows actually do go all the way to the back on this top part. This part here, they didn't add the windows back here until they did the inter until they uh, modified the uh, Excelsior into the Enterprise B model. And then they extended these windows back. But on this top part, 
even as the accelerator, these windows kind of came back further. So I've got to, uh, I've got those already kind of drawn out on some uh, tape down here. It's a little bit out of the camera right now, but I'm going to tape those on here and drill those windows out. And then I got to fill them with uh, UV resin resand, which means I'm going to have to redo all this, which is fine because. One thing I want to point out, I, did, I mentioned that you want to make sure that when you do you use the UV resin, uh, if you do this method, you want to make sure you get all that UV resin off, except for what's filling the window in. Uh, you don't want to leave a bump or anything because what happens is, and I didn't notice this until uh, after, but if I can get this to focus on it, you see... This spot right here where there's like a crack in the paint, that's because there's a slight bulge there uh, where I didn't quite sand the UV resin all the way off. So this is going to have to be sanded anyway because I'm going to have to re-sand this and finish getting the rest of that UV resin off of there. But uh, that's why it's important to get, uh, when you sand this, make sure you get all your UV resin sanded off except for what's actually filling the windows. You don't want to leave any any on the outside to where it makes kind of a it'll make a little bit of a bump or something uh on your your part here and then when you go and paint it for whatever reason uh if you if you don't get it all off it tends to leave a little crack or a crackly paint or that so i'm about to sand that anyway so it's fine that i've got to add those windows in back here at the same time so i'll get those windows added in and i'll just re-sand this whole thing on the side so then i'll have to re <laughs> remask it and relight block it but I, I probably won't do that now since i've shown you what my plan is with this and kind of giving you an idea how this is going to turn out uh with those windows uh what i'm gonna do is go ahead and sand this and once i get the top and bottom together once i get everything done with this get the lights installed and i'm ready to seal this up um, once i get the seal up then i can do the seam work here and then i will uh remask this relight block it and all that so uh, that's fine that I get it because this would have probably gotten messed up anyway. I think I could have gotten this together. This actually fits together really nice with the lower part. And you could probably get away with not even doing any putty work along this. But um, I'm going to do some anyway probably because if, you, if you're not lighting it, you could definitely get away with it. But since I'm lighting this, I'd be concerned that I still might get some light leaks in a couple spots around here. So I'm going to have to do some uh, some seam work on it anyway just to make sure I don't get those, those light leaks. Light leaks bad. But... Um, so I've been working on the uh, interconnecting dorsal here, the neck. It turned out pretty nice. Um, it's not quite smoothed out, but you can see that seam actually looks pretty good there. There's a couple of little blotchy spots there, but uh, that's just uh, from where I had to do the work. I mean, it's the best I could do with it without sanding off the lines, but uh, it turned out pretty nice. What I did was I, uh, I took this and... Uh, Painted it black to light black. Well, actually, I'm sorry. This is printed in black. I printed this in black. Uh, what am I thinking? This is the kit part. Um, no, I painted this black, and um, then I came over it and did a uh, dry brush with some gunmetal. And then I wanted to lighten it up just a little bit more to uh, to match what I saw in the studio model. And so I came back over this and, and dry brushed a little bit more with uh, just some plain... Oh, uh, silver. I think I left it over on. Oh, here it is. It's just some plain silver. And uh, I think that helped bring it out a little bit more. And uh, I, I like the way it looks, but I want to try something else with I want to try uh, a different method. And um, I printed up, actually did the 3D printed part anyway. And I like this 3D printed part, uh, which I think is from, uh, like I said, Model Works. And you can see that um, the uh, the detail isn't, well, you can't really see too much with it right now, but the detail is a little finer on this. And the uh, the front parts, these front openings here, are a little more recessed. So it gives a little more depth to it like it should have versus with the kit part where it's just kind of a flat part with just a little bit of detail on it. So I think I'm going to want to use this anyway. And besides, it also gets rid of those seams. You're able to print it with no seams. And uh, it fits the kit part perfectly. So, won't have any problems with that. But uh, I want to try something a little different with this. And uh, 
This was actually suggested by, uh, what did I do? I had your name written down and I don't have it. When I come back, I'll, I'll make sure I give you credit. But uh, somebody suggested what they what they do is they uh, they paint it with the gunmetal and then do a black wash over it. But what I think I'm going to do, because to me it's a little bit lighter when I look at the studio model images. Definitely this part here uh, looks too light to be gunmetal to me. And that's just my eyes looking at it. Um, I, I would never say somebody's wrong about anything. You, you know, it's not everybody sees colors the same way. I've always said that. And to me, this just looks like more of a, a regular silver around here, maybe even an aluminum. But uh, when I look at, uh, the, at least the gunmetal I've got is a really dark, uh, if you can look at it. And it could be that some of the gunmetals are different shades too. But it's, it's really dark. It's like really dark. So um, I think what I'm going to do is with this one is airbrush it silver and then maybe come over it with a gunmetal wash and we'll see how that looks and uh, we'll see how that turns out and then this part here I'll just paint silver to match uh, what I see on the studio model and hopefully since this is silver with just a gunmetal wash they should hopefully blend together real nice but uh, that's what I'm gonna try with it so I'm gonna do that uh, I'm gonna work on getting this the additional windows done on this and uh, then we'll come back and see where we're gonna go next hey right, guys so um <laughs> Y'all really gonna hate me here in a minute because uh, I've been looking at uh, I'm still working on the windows on the secondary hall, but I'd started looking at the windows for the uh, the saucer as well, and uh, there's a couple problems. So first of all, let me point out in the kit they've got uh, you've got windows for the saucer 21, 22, and 23. The instructions improperly. Uh, improperly label your uh, your decals that go around the rim as 22 that's actually decal 23 all these decal 23's go around your rim and your decal 22 uh, actually goes on the underside of the saucer so uh, and then 21 is your uh, your windows around the uh, this top edge here let me focus this so you can see this but so 22 I think is what I was gonna know no 21 uh, goes around this edge here 23 goes around this outer rim here and then 22 goes on the underside kind of like your your lower windows on the uh, the refit the uh, the issue is there's another set of missing windows on this and uh, it's a row of windows that's supposed to go around this uh, this section here, which is kind of like I guess kind of like the BC deck for uh, you know the refit. I know this isn't the BC deck, but I'm just saying it's kind of like that. It's uh, the bridge would be up here, and then you've got this row of windows that kind of come around the front here, just like you have on the BC deck of the refit, is what I'm saying. So you don't have a decal for that though uh, in this kit. So I'm going to get with Gus uh, in, about making. A decal for that because uh, I'm pretty sure he's probably got these similar decals or decals similar like this the issue with this is you know I'm out of focus um, in order to do those windows the ones around this edge here they make them really small and uh, they shouldn't be they should be the same size as the windows on the secondary hall and as these windows here that uh, they have for the rim They're, they make them really small even smaller than the windows on the rim edge uh, the rim of the saucer so uh, these should be the same size though the problem is in order for me to make these windows the same size and not have it go from the top of the saucer to the top edge here I'm gonna have to raise this platform this platform is just too thin for that same thing with this edge here now I have a set of enhanced saucer edges for this uh, from uh, from model works uh, there's a there's a set of 3d printable edges that you can buy there that will replace this whole rim so basically you have to cut you have to cut this whole rim off 
in order to uh, to put in actually I think you cut it from this first panel line here because it also includes these edge windows but you've got to take this whole rim off and then replace it with the 3d printed parts in addition to that if I'm gonna fix this deck I am uh, gonna have to replace it and I am currently working on trying to make a new deck in CAD and uh, it's really pushing my CAD skills. So we're going to see how it's turned out. I'm done it. I'm, I'm actually printing it now to get a first look at how it's looking. And then I'll have to make some adjustments, I'm sure. I doubt the first print is going to be perfect. But um, anyway, that's where I'm at with this. And I hate to say it, but it's just, you can, you can decal this. And if Gus does a, a set of decals for this, they're going to have to be smaller than the, than the rim windows. You just, you can't fit a regular size window on this edge like it should be if you look at if you look at this edge here just look at it for a minute just stare at it and you see how thin that is compared to this picture of the uh this is actually the uh the greg jean model but this is a picture i took of the Greg Jean model, you see how much higher that deck is. And uh, pictures of, I can pull, I can show you a picture of the actual studio model, and you can see how thick that 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 top piece. It's just thicker. It's not as thin as what it's showing on the model here. So it it's going to have to be. Uh, I'm going to have to fix that. I, it's just not going to work for me. It's not going to work for me. So. Um, <laughs> Let me finish uh, working on, I'm going to, I got that test pre piece printed up. Once it prints up, I'll show you what the first render looks like. And uh, I'll have to make some adjustments, like I said, for sure. But uh, we'll take a look at it and see where we're at on that. And I'm going to keep working on this, this part as well, getting this ready for, uh, for uh, working on doing some more internal work on the, uh, the hull. Also, I printed up the, uh, the 3D print of the lower, um, cargo slash shuttle bay here so I'm going to uh, show you that here when we come back too so just give me a little bit and we'll come back and take a look all right guys working on uh, rectifying this uh, BC deck I'm calling it the BC deck I don't know what it is but it's basically the closest resemblance I can come up with for this but uh, so my 3d part first run didn't turn out too bad it actually matches up pretty well almost perfectly to uh, in size to the the part that's on here the only issue is is it's it's way too thin and the uh, the windows are way too small so I'm going to uh, going to have to do some more work on this this needs to be at least twice that thickness and uh, the windows need to be larger as well because they're not going to match uh, they're a little bit too small for the windows on here I think they need to be maybe Maybe another half a millimeter larger. I need to look and see what size I made the masks so I can make these windows the same. I think I only did these uh, at a millimeter and they're way too small. So I'm going to make those bigger. Uh, but other than that, it actually turned out pretty well. I, uh, I did the dome in the middle. Right, let me uh, focus this so you can get a better look at this. You can see the print lines are terrible on it. But that's because I, didn't, I need to change the angle on it when I reprint it. Uh, also might need to do some maintenance on my printer, but, um, as far as the size and all that, it turned out pretty well. You can see, I've got the, uh, the panels in there, like they're supposed to be, they're just a little obscured because of the terrible print lines I have. So a little work I got to do on that, but, um, uh, the, uh, the dome is there. And of course that doesn't matter for me because I'm going to be, uh, doing the NCC version, which has the two, uh, <clears throat> Damn, I keep having focuses, uh, which has the two impulse crystals. So uh, that, all I have to do is just take this and push it out of the way. I mean, it's pretty flexible, so it just pushes, <laughs> it'll just push out the way or I just cut it out the way if I'm not going to use it. Um, I'll probably put this up for download if anybody's interested in going this same route. But just keep in mind, you do not have to go this route because uh, it's a lot of work that's going to need to be done in order to blend this back in with the top. I'm going to have to cut, basically cut out this whole BC deck part and uh, put that in its place and then putty around it and do some work on it. 
hopefully uh, I can do this to where I don't have too much work to do on it but uh, either way there's definitely gonna be quite a bit of work that's got to be done on it so I got to work on that and um, the other thing I printed up was these rims from model works and a uh, little issue with these so I printed these up and these should basically replace the rim the problem is these are fine but this front piece is missing the lip around it that it shows in the photos on the model works website it shows that all three of these are the same basically well this one's missing the lip and it's also way too long you can see how much longer it's, it's going to make this rim too too big to fit the saucer so um, yeah, so I sent a message to Model Works. We'll see what they say, but that's that's not going to work. So uh, the other issue is too is that these windows are also too small. So I'm either going to have to go in and modify this file and make the windows bigger, uh, or drill them out, which I don't really want to have to drill these out. But I might have to anyway because I'm trying to figure out these uh, openings come on this lip which as far as I know once we cut this part off the the round the edge of the saucer sits on this lip which means it's gonna block these openings for these windows so I can't shine light through them um, so that's got to be modified anyway so I've got to decide uh, what I want to do here whether I want to, to do that or uh, I kinda don't have much choice because like I said this uh, raised portion here where you got to have windows at is is too thin. It's not tall enough for me to uh, to drill windows into it that need that the size they need to be anyway to match the windows on the secondary hull. So um, I'm gonna have to do some more work on that. So I'll, let me do some more work on it. I got to make some adjustments to this part, and uh, we'll come back and see where we're at. All right, so I've got uh, that add-on part made up get this in a closer and focus you see that turned out nice I already removed the uh, the ribs because I'm not doing the the NX version so I've got some windows in there I don't know we're gonna see I might uh, try printing this in clear and uh, doing away with the window openings that way I've got a little more freedom of where to place my windows I might need to place them a little bit lower but we'll see basically right now what I've done is uh, made it to where all I had to do was remove the fins and then sand down the uh, this detail here that goes up around the bridge and this part just goes right on top of it but uh, I may need to take a little more off I think it's still maybe a little bit a little bit too high of a profile I don't know a little bit too high might need to come down a little bit more so I might have to take a little more material off to drop it down I did try uh, just just for sake of checking it out and trying it, I did put some decal, wind, the window uh, masks on there to see how that would look. And uh, it's just it's just a little too thin back here because this would basically go from uh, the whole uh, face of this this edge here, and that's not not the way it should be. It should be a little bit, just a little bit higher. Uh, this one's not too bad, but the rim, again, you can see it will take up the top to bottom of this whole face right here, and uh, that's not right. So I think that's not quite as high as that needs to be either to work out. And of course, my window, uh, my window sizing could be off a little bit too, so that that could be part of the problem as well. I'll admit, but. Um, I don't, I don't want really tiny windows on here. For one thing, it's going to be really hard to mask. I can't cut masks smaller than these. These are about the, the limit my Cricut will cut decently um, as far as size. So I can't really go any smaller with my window masks. But um, anyway, that's where I'm at with that. I've got this part made up. I mean to take a little more material off the top here to make it look right um, as far as its profile. But uh, I do have it made up to where the kit parts, this part here. But I think I'm getting, I think Cass over at Lake Monster Details, when I get those parts, I think he's got this in clear uh, when he sends that kit. But it'll fit just like in the kit part right there. And then this part will also fit right in there as well, just like with the, the original kit part. So that'll all work out. But uh, 
yeah as soon as I finish working out working this out seeing how it turns out I'll put this up if anybody's interested for it uh, on my Colts 3d web page so let me work some more on this stuff and we'll come back and see where we're at all right so working on this uh, I sent a message yesterday the model works and uh, haven't gotten an answer back so uh, I can't keep waiting for them so I'm gonna go ahead and go in CAD and fix this myself because this it's not it's not gonna work the way this is so uh, just for anybody that's thinking about getting this part I am just gonna forewarn you that uh, I don't know if anybody else has had this issue has gotten these parts and had this issue before but I, I can't recommend them because this doesn't work um, I've actually had to go into CAD and I've actually done this in CAD and uh, the parts don't fit correctly even in CAD so even when I got all these parts fitted together I ended up with about a one and a half millimeter twist from this end around to this end this end's actually one and a half millimeters higher uh, because that's basically what I had to do to get these parts fit this part here the center part I actually had to stretch out a little bit to get it to line up with the other two halves so um, I don't know that's I, I, I have used one or two model works parts before and hadn't really had a big problem but uh, for a $12 part that's kind of unacceptable when you, you, you pay for something and it won't work I don't know if anybody else has uh, used this part and had success with it if you have let me know um, this centerpiece does not match what the pictures show on the website so I don't know why that is but without them responding I, I can't really uh, recommend their, their product so uh, that's going in the trash and uh, what I've done is since I had to go into CAD and fix those I went ahead and just melded them all together so I'm gonna print that entire rim as one piece so that way I don't have to worry about seam work uh, that's two seams I eliminate right there then I've just got the seam here and then this seam here hopefully will blend in uh, as a panel line uh, if I do this correctly so here's hoping that works but uh, that's what I'm gonna try to do um, I've got this part worked up uh, it matches up perfectly with the the old where the old deck was you can see I've had to open that up because if I'm gonna light this I've uh, I've got to have this open so light can actually get up and into these windows so I'm gonna glue this on top now and get this in place and then do the seam work around it. I'm gonna have to putty it uh, I'm gonna piece, put a piece of tape over the windows that are on here to keep putty from getting in there and blocking them up I'll get my putty in place and uh, go ahead and get that glue down puttied sanded and uh, this deck I opened this up a little bit since I'm obviously I'm not using this impulse deck because I'm not doing the NX version so I went ahead and opened that up a little bit more so that way when this piece goes into place these two holes that are supposed to provide light to the impulse crystals uh, won't be blocked they'll, they'll be wide open underneath so that'll work I've got to open this up I'm gonna uh, go in CAD and modify this so this is already opened up some uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and drill this open since I've already printed this part. There's no sense of printing another one. And I'm pretty sure this piece, when I get the uh, the upgraded parts from CAS over at Lake Monster Details, I'm pretty sure this comes as a clear part from CAS. So uh, what's all i got to do is get that in place. Um, I'll have to apply some window masks, light block the clear part, and uh, that way I've got the windows on. They're using the, uh, the little round masks I've got. I think there's like four windows on this I think there's two two windows on each side of the bridge that uh, I'm gonna have to put masks on light block it and that should work for that so I gotta wait for those parts from Cass over Lake Monster details though before I can do that but I'm just trying to get this ready so once I get his parts I can uh, do the rest of the work I need to do on this without keeping people waiting so uh, let me work on this again still working on these parts over here and we'll come back and see where I'm at all right, so we got a couple things going, <laughs> a couple things going on here. So I've got, um, I've pretty much got all my windows done for this section. I've just got to put the masks on, and uh, light block it, and then put a clip. But I'm not going to do any of that until after I, I get this sealed up, and then I do any seam work I need to do around here. I'm, uh, I was working on drilling. You, you've got, um, I think these are three blue lights that are supposed to be on the back here. So I've drilled those open. And then you've got, depending on what you want to do with it, in the movie it looks like it's a warm white on both sides, but that could just be light filtering. So it's up to you which way which way you want to do it. You can do, uh, I would do maybe either a cool white or a warm white for these two lights here. 
Um, probably have to do those with separate SMDs. Uh, these ones up here, I'm not sure how I'm going to work them out yet. I may fill these in with uh, UV resin. And uh, I may fill all these in with UV resin. But uh, this one here, I've got to do a little re-etching because it kind of falls on. You can see here, there's a uh, detail there. And uh, if you're not careful like I did, you actually drill into that that rib there that uh, panel line I guess you could say that's supposed to be there well now I've got to fill that in and then re-etch that line so um, I'm gonna have to do that I've uh, I think I've got something worked out for uh, getting these windows that are blocked by the uh, the, uh, the lower cargo slash shuttle bay uh, to light so but I'm gonna talk about that in a minute right now I've got those parts painted for the shuttle bay uh, over there drying so I, I want to talk about that after I've got those parts and I can show you what I'm looking at doing with that so we'll set that aside for now I've, uh, I've got the windows drilled out on the bottom of the saucer I've also got to drill out and remove this lower sensor dome because uh, you, you can light this but then you would have to open these up and um, I think it's just a better option I've got a 3d printed part for that so I'm going to completely cut this out and, and replace it with a 3D printed part that's already got the openings and it's also got a clear insert piece uh, that I got to print and clear that I can put in there and that'll allow this to light up properly. So I've got to do that to the bottom. The uh, modification to the, uh, I'm calling BC deck because it's the closest thing uh, I could think of, is pretty, pretty near done. Um, I've got a, a little bit more seam work I'm still working on, but uh, it's starting to blend in really good. Now those windows are oversized right now because remember I'm going to be using the, uh, the smaller window mask on this part as well. Uh, and then there will be smaller windows. So they're a little oversized right now. And uh, this part here sits a little bit higher than the studio model but it's, it's better than it was. It's the only way I could fit these windows along this section back here. But um, other than that it's turned out really nice. The, uh, the kit parts fit in this. So I can still use the sensor dome, but I am waiting for the uh, upgraded parts from Lake Monster Detail because, like I said, I believe this bridge piece is um, is clear when I get it from cast. I think this is clear to help you make it easier to light. You've got, uh, I think, two windows on each side of the bridge that I'm going to need to put masks on here and then light block the whole thing. But uh, I think this is also supposed to be a strobe, so I'm going to have to... Uh, Probably use fiber optic for that. I may use fiber optic for all these, all these marker lights. Um, as long as I don't have to put too much of a bend in the fiber optic to get it run up through these these openings. This whole rim is going to get replaced anyway. Um, you can see I've got that uh, after that uh, 3D printable rim section, which I've had to do a lot of work to to uh, to get it to fit out properly. I had to add these tabs because it's missing this rim on the inside. And it's been about almost a week since I uh, messaged uh, Model Works, and I never got a response. So, um, just be forewarned, you know, if you, you try to use these parts from Model Works, they may not work properly. I'm not sure what the issue is with why this did not fit properly. I'm still going to have a piece here, a little bit, little bit of a gap on the, uh, the underside. This is going to fit like this. And uh, you can see I'm going to have a little bit of a gap in the front here because this doesn't quite fit properly either so that's going to have to get filled in so not completely happy with the fact that uh, it doesn't fit like it shows in the pictures on the website but uh, I'm gonna make it work it'll I'll get it to work so what I've got to do now is um, this piece needs to replace the rim that's on the model now so what I got to do is uh, cut up and then cut all the way around around this first panel line here so I got cut all the way around, and uh, what I'm going to do is, you can do one of two things. You can either use um, a drill and drill holes all the way around this, which is just going to take forever for me. I've got a, a rotary uh, cutter for my Dremel that I can use to just cut this off. Uh, what you'll do is, what you want to do is cut it close to that line, but don't cut it right on that line. Cut it close to that line, leave you a little bit of space. That way, you can come around with some sandpaper and. Uh, and work that to right up to that panel line there because that's where that needs to sit on on this rim here on the inside rim 
So that's what I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna get that done. I'm gonna get uh, this lower sensor dome cut out and fill these windows in with uh, UV resin. And if I've, I should have those other parts should be dry uh, by the time I'm ready to go back into those. And we'll talk about my solution, hopefully, solution for getting these windows to light up that are blocked by this lower cargo bay slash shuttle bay. So give me a little bit to work on that. We'll come back and take a look. All right, guys, so I've got this, uh, this pretty much worked out. You can see I cut that rim off right up to the first, that first panel line. And once you get it close, you just kind of come around and sand it. Um, until you see that panel line disappear and then you'll know it's even all the way around and I pretty much got this worked out so once you've got it ready you should be able to just take this rim and drop it right in place and then these two sides here meet and there we go that's how that's going to go on you just put a bead of glue around this glue it in place come back and uh, probably put a little bit of uh, perfect plastic putty in here and let it dry and then come run around it with a q-tip to make sure that uh, panel line looks looks correct so that's all there pretty much is to it I mean it's a bit of work to get this rim off especially if you don't have a Dremel it's a lot of drilling and, and cutting but uh, I basically took my my rotary blade and cut around this and then just used my uh, hobby knife to kind of cut where I needed to to get the rest of it off and uh, that's pretty much how it worked out so I'm gonna get this attached and uh, we'll see how it turns out and then we'll come back at the same time and look at this other stuff uh, once those parts finish drying for the uh, shuttle bay the lower shuttle bay slash cargo bay so give me a minute all right so let's take a look at what uh, what I've gotten accomplished here now I've gotten this uh, this isn't glued in place yet it's just kind of sitting in there while I figure out exactly how this is gonna work um, I think this might work this way let me focus here and it looks like oh, this is a red light still might not be able to tell though. looks like uh, and the camera is really not picking it up too well looks like I can get light down into these windows the main problem is going to be this window here but uh, it looks like these other windows I can get light down in there Especially on this side. This side's actually, yeah. Camera's gonna wash it out. I think you can see, but you can pretty much tell that this window down here is gonna be hard to get light to. I'm gonna have to try a couple different things. Put some LED strip lighting. I may have to uh, stick a separate uh, LED strip or SMD, some SMDs down in here to get lighting uh, to these windows on the side. I did make a little bit of a gap there, um, just by let me pull this out. Just by putting some uh, UV resin in here and building up uh, a layer of UV resin on the inside where these that group of windows is on each side and bring it up enough to where it was actually above the uh, the top edge of this shuttle bay which I haven't glued together yet I then then I painted the outside here that faces those windows white to kind of help try to reflect some light um, it works out to a point but uh, I think it's still gonna be a challenge to uh, to get light to these windows I think it's possible though so <laughs> I'm gonna have to work on that and then I got to work out how uh, how I'm gonna do these lights on the back here because the shuttle bay also kind of blocks where these two lights need to go but I think I can wedge an SMD down in there in front of these openings to light those these I think if I shave just a little bit off the top of this part um, I think I can hopefully run uh, some fiber optic in there for these ones these are these need to be blue these like I said I think are more of a warm white and then this interior on the studio model this interior and the way I've done it it's uh, it's basically just painted white and it, it looks like it's probably even just a flat white but um, there's no real detail painting turn this light on there's no real detail painting uh, visible on this part when you look at the studio model it looks like it's just painted white and um, this 3d part really does add a lot more detail because you get uh, you get kind of the mesh look in there 
uh, on the top and on this part here you can see and uh, by painting this black first which is mainly for light blocking and then coming over it with white you get you get a bit of detail kind of popping out you can see there and I like that uh, but basically really the only thing to do to this is put in uh, blue lighting either blue lighting or I could put a piece of blue film gel over this opening in the back and that's going to give my backlighting, my blue backlighting that you see uh, on the studio model, especially at the end of Star Trek VI. When, uh, at the end of this video, you'll see it if you haven't seen it. I'm sure you have. But uh, where the Excelsior and Enterprise are floating together and the Excelsior veers off, you can see that back is just pretty much lit with a blue light. But uh, yeah, I've seen people do detail paint on this. And you can do detail paint on it, but... Mm, excuse me. Like I said, the studio model is pretty much just uh, just a plain white, uh, maybe even a little bit of an off-white. But uh, So that's pretty much how I'm going to do that. I'm not going to worry about doing too much detail. I think that black and then coming over it with the white um, highlighted enough detail in there to where I'm kind of happy with it like that. But uh, I do have to figure out that lighting, how I'm going to get that lighting around the, these windows that sit on the side there. That Putting that UV resin in on the sides did help some. But uh, I think I'm still going to have to fit like an SMD down in here or something to get lighting down in there. And then the problem with doing that is then you've got to uh, get all those SMDs positioned to where it's even looking and not bright. You know, if you just put one SMD down there, it's going to look really bright in the windows around that SMD. And then the other ones further off are going to look darker, which uh, might not be a bad effect. But uh, I'm going to have to look and see how that, that turns out. As far as this part, I've got that, uh, that saucer edge, that replacement saucer edge in. You can see... Um, my hope was to be able to just use perfect plastic putty, fill in, and then come around with a wet Q-tip and run it around and, and put that panel line back in like I did on the side of the uh, the one three fifty refit or uh, A that I'm working on right now. Um, but uh, that didn't work out. This pretty much where I had to add those tabs in the front to hold so that the the uh, saucer once I cut it down would fit and sit on top. I didn't quite get the same height as the ones on the side. Around the side where those where the uh, that ridge already is, this sat pretty good. It sat perfectly. But the problem again is that front just did not fit on here like it should have. And I still have yet to hear back from Model Works, and I just can't keep waiting on them. So I'm going to have to, uh, I had to put some Bondo on here, and I might have to do a bit of sanding to get this to even out. You can see I've, uh, I've got to re-etch those panel lines once I get this sanded. Uh, sand it smooth and even uh, like I need it and then the big challenge is going to be restoring the panel line there should be one panel line at the edge here that uh, I'm going to have to put back in and uh, etching tape isn't going to want to follow this curve too well I don't think I haven't tried yet but I, I suspect etching tape isn't going to want to follow it I may have to use a piece of vinyl tape and just try to lightly run that a couple times until I get enough of a groove to uh, to be able to, to use my my etcher here so we'll see how I work that out um, I'm, I'm trying to keep what I've got here re-etched as every time I sand so that way I, I still know where all my lines need to be for the panels but uh, that's a work in progress so I've got a bit more work to do on that and uh, on the bottom part, I have got the, uh, the 3D replacement part printed up. And uh, it just adds a bit more detail. It's a, more, it's a bit more uh, squared off, whereas this is a bit more rounded and, and less, uh, less detailed. This part here, I'll have to uh, take my drill and, and drill out, drill this part out in the center. And I'll do it just like I showed on the other parts. I'll drill holes around the, the outer edge just short of the edge of this piece. And I'll come in and file and sand it. And then this part should be able to pop right into place like that. And uh, this has a clear insert that goes in here to, uh, to help it light up too. So I got to get that done. Um, so I got work on that to do yet. And that's where I'm at right now. That's, that's what I've got going on. And uh, once I get to a, a good spot where I can start assembling stuff, then we can start looking at lighting and everything. But I've kind of got an idea of how the lighting needs to go on this. Uh, but we'll talk about that when we get to that part. So for now, let me keep working on this, and uh, we'll come back and get an update. All right, so what I've done here is uh, I've used my drill to drill holes all the way around this part, and then I came in with my 
my hobby knife and just cut around breaking in between those holes and then you get the part just kind of comes off like that and uh, you can see I did it inside of uh, that shape you can see the walls are still there uh, the outer walls are still there from the uh, the old spotlights and uh, that allows me to come in now with a uh, either a file or what I might do is use uh, my router bit on my Dremel to take this down a little bit more and then you just come in with a file and work your way around this because I'm gonna have to work this down some for this part to fit on here so I'm gonna do a little more work on that and once I got this part ready to go in place we'll come back and take a look at it all right so I've got that part cut out you can see how that uh, that looks and uh, same to this pretty much smooth a little bit of a ridge right there but uh, it's pretty much smooth at this point it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to glue this part over top of this and do some putty work anyway but it's pretty much sanded smooth and I've got these uh, these ports that stuck out a little bit that's fine because this part is made to pretty much fill it in and uh, all it's going to do take this part you'll notice that forward and backward the back part is a little bit wider the uh, the back spotlight is a little bit wider than the front and that's the way it's supposed to be on the uh, corner of the studio model when you look at it. this back one is a little bit wider than the forward one so we know the narrower one goes to the front and that's going to sit on this part and cover that opening we can get this lined up just right So these, uh, all these directions should be pointing at a set of windows, except this back one, of course. But uh, all these other ones should be pointing directly at a set of windows. And just want to make sure this is lined up as evenly as I can get it. Now this forward one is closer to this forward set of windows than these other uh, four are. So that is correct to the studio model that this forward one is closer to this set of windows than all these other ones. So they don't have to be even all the way around you want these four to be even this forward one should be closer uh, to that and then this back one should be just at where this uh, this uh, depression for the neck starts so you want that pretty close to that as long as you can get that there once I got that lined up I'm just gonna hold that in place and it's got some uh, there's some areas on here where you can put some glue so we'll put some glue on each of these. And then to make the setup quicker, I'm just going to hit it with some uh, zip kicker. I'll let that set up for a minute. Make sure this is pushed down evenly all the way. It doesn't take long for this glue to, to uh, set up once I use this uh, the zip kicker sets it up pretty quick so there we go now that's in place and that's pretty much how that looks I do have to do uh, a little bit of uh, putty work around the let's see if I can get this zoomed in right a little bit of putty work around these areas here in between the spotlights uh, what I'll do with that is I'll use my perfect plastic putty I'll work that in around the edges here let it dry and then I'll come in with a Q-tip, uh, come in with a Q-tip and wet it, and I'll come around and take out uh, the extra plastic putty, and that'll leave behind a perfect seamless uh, area where this part joins the hole now. And uh, that's perfect. This is ready for lighting. So you can see that opening there on all these, and this actually has a piece that goes in the to place here now. The one thing that I should have checked before I did this was whether that piece, uh, excuse me, that clear piece will go into place here, but I'm not too worried about that myself because um, I'm not too sure that that perfect, uh, not perfect, but uh, that plastic piece that comes with this that I have to 3D print, I'm not too sure that that's going to allow this forward uh, to light up the uh, registry on the bottom like I want it to, so I might not be able to use that piece anyway. But uh, once I get that piece printed up, I will test fit it and we'll see if it'll still fit in here. I may have to open these up just a little bit more 
um, and then I can get it in there if I have to. But uh, we'll take a look at that next video. I think I'm pretty much going to wrap this up. I think we're already over 40 minutes on this episode. And uh, I don't really feel like I got a lot done, but uh, I guess I'll take a look back at this video once I get done with it and see uh, if I really made a lot of progress or not. Um, there's not a, I'm kind of getting to a point where I'm waiting. Uh, CAS over Lake Monster Details is supposed to ship uh, the parts for this, the upgrade parts for this tomorrow. So hopefully I will have those um, beginning of next week. And uh, I just got notification from Gary over at Mask Design that he shipped the, uh, the masks for the 1537 Reliant. So I can get started on that. Also... Uh, waiting on parts for that from Cass. So those will get here at the same time. So that's that. I should be starting that build up here shortly. Um, I've got some parts from another sponsor that I'm going to be introducing on that build. And I uh, should have that out uh, probably a week after next before I have the first episode of that build out since I won't get those parts until sometime next week. And then I've got to find time to work that in. Um, the refit for those of you that are following that build is coming along i've got the clear coat is dry on it but uh, before i can start the aztecing on the top and bottom on the saucer well on the saucer as a whole uh, i've got gary is sending me a replacement set for that ring around the bc deck because uh, like i mentioned that got a little messed up while, I'm, while it's been sitting um, so gary is sending me a replacement for that and uh, i can start working back on that part the engineering hole I can't do anything else with until I get Cass's uh, shuttle bay complete from Lake Monster Details. But I can't do that because he's also sending me some parts, uh, some additional parts for that. Uh, I'm going to try a different approach to that shuttle bay. I wasn't completely happy with uh, the approach I took the first time. So he's sending me some replacement parts to try a different approach to that. So I can't do anything else with the, uh, the A, the Enterprise A build, until I get those parts. So I'm kind of sitting in a holding pattern waiting for parts. And uh, that's why you're kind of seeing videos on this build come up because there's more I can do to this to get this prepped. Uh, I'm still waiting on uh, the Aztec decals from Gus, but I don't really need those until this is all put together. I just can't really go much further with this build until I get those parts from Cass over Lake Monster Details. So I should get all those, like I said, beginning of next week uh, after the 4th of July holiday. So, uh, but that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. Um, I've got some more work to do. I'll be working on that between now and the next episode. I've got to work out this this seam here now um, and get that done I'll, I'll finish getting this worked in and this will pretty much be ready to go as far as the bottom of the saucer but uh that's pretty much it for this episode guys i appreciate everybody kind of tuning in and uh i appreciate all the feedback on the, uh, the youtube page and on the facebook uh, page as well and uh if you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button it costs you nothing but it helps me out a lot especially with my sponsors and bringing on a new sponsor uh, it would really help to get some new subscribers. So if you, uh, you get any use out of this stuff, you enjoy these build videos, please hit that subscribe button. Or at the very least, hit that thumbs up. Uh, let me know that you appreciated it. And uh, again, as always, a shout out to my sponsors, Cass over Lake Monster Details, Gus over at GCALS, and Gary over at Mass Design. Plenty of builds coming up using their products as well as the new sponsor I'll be uh, announcing when I get that one fit, ah, excuse me, that one five thirty seven reliant bill going. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, keep modeling.